This is Mr. Holsey with 8 Squared's Officially Understood Science, and today we're going to learn how to read topographic maps. A topographic map is a two-dimensional model of the Earth's surface, representing the 3D world. You may often hear these called contour maps, and their purpose is to show elevation above or below sea level using what we call contour lines. So in reading topographic maps, the first thing you're going to notice is contour lines. These are lines on a map that connect points of equal elevation. Now, even though you may not see it, all contour lines will make a complete circle. So you may not be able to see it, but maybe this map might look something like this. So all it will connect, even if we can't see it. And so this shows elevation and the shape of the land. And how we look at elevation, we'll look at this number right here, the interval. Uh, and so everything on this line right here, I'm going to switch colors for us so we can see a difference between the lines I've already drawn. So everything on this line is 500. Now it doesn't tell us exactly the, in this example, the, if it's feet, if it's inches or kilometers, you know, whatever, uh, or meters, it's not telling us that exactly, but we can assume it's 500 something. Now in this example, everything above this line is going to be over 500. Everything below it is going to be less than 500. Now, to determine how much each contour line represents, we need to find the difference in elevation between each line. And that's what we call a contour interval. So we need to find the distance between 500 and this line, this line, and this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line. And we can do some pretty simple math to figure this out. On average, uh, we're gonna have one, two, three, for five contour lines in between, in between. And so we can do some very simple math. We have 600 right here, and we started off at 500. So we're gonna just subtract five, uh, 600 from 500, or 500 from 600, and that's gonna give us 100. Okay, and we're just gonna assume it's meters for right now. So we know the difference between the two intervals here, or not the intervals, um, but we know the difference between these two major points. And so what we'll do is we'll divide that by a number of contour intervals, which is five, and 100 divided by five, uh, really easy. Five will go in 10 times, so that's two. We bring down our zero. Five will go into zero, zero times. And so we have a contour interval of 20. Let's see, 520, four, uh, 540, 560, 580, and then 600. So there's 20, in this case, we're gonna say meters distant difference. So from there to there is 20, we're gonna say meters. Not feet, sorry. So this is actually in feet. Now the index contour is usually every fifth line. And so on almost all contour maps, the fifth line is going to be printed darker and give you an elevation. This will help you to determine what the contour interval is 
and it's just giving us an idea of how high something is. So we're going to assume this is feet, so that may be 6,800 feet at this contour interval. And so we call this number the index contour. So right here, <clears throat> we can see an image that represents index contours. So we have one right here, which represents an elevation. And we're just going to use feet from now on of 3,000 feet. We have another right here, which isn't giving us a number, actually. We have another right here, oops, we have another right here. And another right here. Now this one does tell us an elevation of 2200. So as I'm finishing coloring in these lines, what if you find yourself in a situation or are faced with questions that ask you to find not the different index contours or even what the contour lines represent, what our contour interval is. Well, we can use the same trick that we did for our um, contour intervals to find our index contours. So we start at 2200, we have one, two, three, four lines here. And so, very simple math. Our top number there is 3,000 minus 2,200, where we're starting at. And we're just going to find the difference. That's going to leave us with 800. So we have 800 feet. Now, in between 3,000 and 2,200, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, four contour lines, or contour indexes. And so, very simple math, we'll just divide this by four. And so this will go into eight. Two times, zero, bring down zero, zero, uh, four will go into zero, zero times, bring down our zero, four will go into zero, zero times. And that leaves us with index contours that increase by 200 feet each time. And so each index contour, if we add that in, this index contour would be 2,400. So it would be 2,600, 2,800, and finally 3,000. And now we could find out what the contour interval is for these lines. And so we have one, if I can get this thing to work, two, three, four, and five. So we have 200 divided by five, Five will go into two zero times, so it will just go with 20. Go in four times. With a zero left over, bring down our zero here. Go in zero times. And so our contour intervals are at 
40, 40 feet. So, you know, 2,240, 2,280, 2,320, 2,360, and get this thing to ever work today, uh, and then 2,400. So some basic rules for contours. These contour lines never crisscross. They, you won't have them like all of a sudden having a contour line going like this across all the others. They do not cross. They represent elevation. They can get closer together or further apart, but they do not cross. Second rule, contours form closed loops. Even if it's not shown on the map, it will form a closed loop. So this is the same, same hill, just using a different part of the map. But even if we can't see it, we can determine that it is a closed loop. Three. Contours bend upstream or uphill when crossing a stream. And so this is due to erosion and things like that. But if you're asked the question, where is the stream or where's a river up here on this one? Um, this is actually pretty easy to tell. And so you'll notice that the lines actually make kind of like an arrow shape. Okay, so it's bending upstream. In other words, where the it's pointing to where the water came from. And so in this map, because it's bending upstream, we can assume the water is flowing down in this direction. And so we see these very significant bends in topographic maps when we're crossing a stream. Closely spaced contours mean a steeper slope. Okay, so steeper slope contour lines are very close together. So if we're looking at this image to the left, we can see an arrow showing a direction. You see how they are getting closer and closer and closer together. It means it is very steep. So for example, if you saw a contour map that had something like this on it, It'd be like a sheer drop off. Wide space contours are gradual or gentle slopes are farther apart. And so if they're further apart, it means that the slope is much easier to go up as opposed to the other one. So if we are going from here to here, uh, we see very wide contour lines, which means we have a very gentle, gradual slope. Not unlike this golf course. So right here, we're going to take a look at uh, how to read a contour map. Again, this is Mount Riddle. So Mount Ginger and Mount Tipster. And so our contour interval is going to be 500 feet. So every contour line represents 500 feet. And so we see 
how the different peaks have different um, different elevations. The Mount Riddle goes up 3,047. Mount Ginger, three, uh, 3,998. And Mount Tipster to 2,186. But we can also see how these are closed loops. And we can see how these are bending uphill. with the flow of water. And here we can see the same peaks, but from a different angle as a contour map. And so we can look at it in the 3D setting as well as a 2D setting. And we can kind of imagine what this would look like you know, with, with our contour lines. If we're looking at this, we see, okay, this one goes up to 500 feet. Well, all three of these mountains have 500 feet. This side's a lot more steep. This side's more gradual. And so, okay, we keep going and going, and we're going to go up to around 1500 or a little up to 2000 excuse me and this is where we see our first big difference where we can easily see okay so this side right here this mountain does eventually make it up to the 2000 range but just at the peak so we know this is the shortest of the three peaks okay so as we keep climbing, we keep climbing, we'll get up to 2,500 here. Uh, and so, and then this would be 3,000. Um, and this would be the second tallest. Now we go from, this is once again 2,000 to 2,500 to 3,000 to 3,500. And we can see this is the tallest of the peaks. And so we can see this if we put both of those maps together, uh, the contour map versus what we would see in the real world. And we can see how they do fall in line with one another. Well, this has been Mr. Holsey for A Squared Sufficiently Understood Science. I hope you enjoyed our tutorial on topographic maps. Remember to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. And hit the bell notification to know when we post new tutorials. As always, thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.